Glory be to God. We bless God for bringing us to another wonderful time in his presence. Um, this is our lesson preview exercise for the Directorate of Personal Education. And today we are going to be looking at the last lesson in this year 2021-2022 Sunday School Manual. And this is lesson 51 titled Eternal Rewards. I know many of us love to be rewarded. Nobody wants to labor in vain. And there is a reward, or there are rewards far beyond any reward that anyone can get here on earth. And that is what we are going to be looking at today. As we proceed, let's have a word of prayers. Let's say, Father, please grant all your children abundant grace to endure any affliction or challenge so that we can receive eternal reward in the name of Jesus. Pray for yourself and say, grant me, Lord, the grace to hold on to the end so that I will make it to heaven and receive reward from you in the name of Jesus. So shall it be in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. Once again, we welcome us because this is the last lesson that we'll be having for this edition of the Sunday School Manual. In a couple of weeks from now, we'll be entering into a new year completely and we'll be looking at uh, new sets of topics in our Sunday School Manual. We bless God for the series of study we have had so far, especially towards the end of this year. We have been looking at eschatology um, series. We've studied on the marriage supper of the Lamb. We have considered also the days of tribulation. We've talked about paradise. And today we are looking at eternal rewards. Our memory verse for this lesson 51 is from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7. And it says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God, and not of us. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, the Bible says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God, and not of us. We will be looking at First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16 to 27, as our Bible passage. But before we look at that Bible passage, we want to look through the introduction um, section of this lesson. It is generally believed that the rewards to be given at the judgment seat of Christ will consist of crowns and other glorious things. The judgment seat of Christ is where believers who made it gloriously to heaven will gather and receive reward. That the, the fact that the word judgment is mentioned there is not to condemn anyone because there, there is no condemnation. We have made it to heaven. It is a place where people will gather, saints will gather, and they will be rewarded based on how they judiciously and effectively make use of the grace that God granted unto them after salvation to serve the Lord faithfully while living on the surface of the earth. So it is a time to reward our labor. That is why it is important for every believer not to fold his or her hands and say it is enough that I am born again and just waiting for the coming of Jesus. Grace has been given unto us according to our several abilities in, 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 in line with the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 7. So we have grace to do something for the Lord. We have grace to make use of the potentials, of the giftings, of the talents, of the enablement that has been given to us to do something to add value to the kingdom of God here on earth, so that when we finish here well, we will be able to receive the reward for our labor. And let me assure you, there is no labor for the kingdom that is in vain. The Bible says God has not called the house of Jacob to seek him in vain. So we also that have been grafted into the house of Jacob, the Israelites of, uh, of God, we have the opportunity to receive our whole reward also. We are not laboring in vain. And it will never be so in the name of Jesus. 
I want to quickly tell us why some of us as believers or as Christians assume that whatever we do for God we are, is, is, is because we are just volunteering to do it, that we are volunteers, that we are not being paid for it. And so we can do it anyhow, anytime. No, 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 no. Kingdom business is not done that way. Once you are born again, you have been called, you have been chosen, you have been ordained for a purpose. John chapter 15, verse 16. John 15, verse 16. Jesus Christ said, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And I have ordained you that ye may go forth and bring fruit, and that your fruit may abide. And then he said, Whatever you ask of me, you will receive. There is reward for our labor on head, and there is much more, far, far better reward for whatever we do in every, uh, also when we get to heaven. Apostle Peter, after walking closely with Jesus one day, he asked this question. He asked Jesus, Master, what shall be our reward? We left all to follow you. Oh, Jesus did not condemn him. Jesus did not look at him and being, as being ambitious. Jesus answered him straight away and said, Peter, don't worry yourself. You see, I want to assure you that in this present world, you are going to receive hundredfold reward for whatever you are forsaking to, for, to follow me, to do the kingdom business. He said, much more. When you get to heaven, oh, there is so much reward waiting for you. So believers, we are not volunteers. We are co-laborers with Christ in his vineyard. And there is reward waiting for us for our labor, not just in this world, but also in the world to come, in eternity with Christ. First, we must make it to heaven. Second, we must labor on head so that we can get rewards while others are receiving their own. That is what we want to consider uh, in this place. The moment we, that we cross to the other side, that the moment, that moment, every form of affliction or pain that we might have gone through in this world, we end. And believers that fall asleep will wake up in the Lord. Falling asleep here, yeah, according to John 11 verse 11, is symbolic for dying physically. But we don't die, we sleep. And so we are going to wake up on that resurrection morning to receive our reward. Every man will stand before the judgment seat of Christ to receive the reward for what he has done in the flesh. The prayer I am praying for you and for myself is that when that resurrection morning shall come, we will not be found missing there. And when we appear before the judgment seat of Christ, we will be glad because we have rewards and crowns waiting for us. Our Bible passage is 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16 to 27. And it says, For though I preach the gospel, this is Apostle Paul talking in his writing to the church at Corinth. He said, For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me. You can see what I was talking about. Why we say we are volunteers? Paul says, No, it is necessary. It is important. I have a mandate to do it. He said, necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. For if I do these things willingly, I have a reward. The opposite of it is doing it unwillingly or grudgingly. When we do it grudgingly, do God's work grudgingly, we don't get the reward. But when we do it willingly, we get the reward. He said, but if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. What is my reward then? Verily, that I that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge. That I abuse not my power in the gospel. It's not by um, placing a financial uh, demand on, on the gospel that we get a reward. It is not right for any believer or any minister of the gospel to begin to quantify the value or the, the what he will gain from doing God's service before doing it. You know, it is common in some places today that to see a minister of God invited for ministration that will first ask, how much are you going to give me? What kind of hotel are you putting me? 
Those are people that are seeking reward before labor. Paul says in this passage that that is not correct. He said it is not to charge anybody for whatever I am doing so that I will not abuse the power of the gospel. For, verse 19 says, For though I be free from all men, yet I have made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews, and unto them that are under the law as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without law, as without law, being without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. To the weak I became as weak, that I might gain the weak. I have made all things to all men, that I might all by all means say some. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. Verse 24 says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run home, but one receiveth the prize. There is a prize for running the Christian race. So run that ye may obtain. We must run so that we can get the reward. Verse 25 says, And every man that struggled for the mastery is temperate in all things. How do we run to receive the reward? We must run lawfully. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we are incorruptible. There is reward, there is crown. Therefore, verse 26, I therefore so wrong, not as uncertain, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. I know what I am doing. I am focused. I have a target. I have a goal. That's what Apostle Paul is saying. And then verse 27, which is the last verse, says, But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, when I have done this work, when I have labored so much on it, I myself should be a castaway. I pray that none of us will be castaways in the presence of God. We will not lose our reward. So whatever we are doing, let us not just do it because it is the work to be done. Let's do it righteously. Let's do it faithfully. Let's do it with, in all honesty and uh, sense, with sense of responsibility unto our master, the one who has chosen us to be co-laborers with him in his vineyard. And I can assure us, great will be our reward. So it is important for us to talk about eternal rewards. And so we have two lesson outlines. The first lesson of line says, what is asking a question, what glories are believers to expect? In other words, when we make it eventually to heaven, when we appear before this judgment seat of Christ, what are we to expect? Number one, it is important for us to know that to be with Christ on that last day brings so much joy. John chapter 14, verse 3, Jesus Christ said, when I prepare a place for you. I am coming back. I will take you to where I am so that you will be with me. Oh, what joy will we have by the time we appear and we see Christ face to face and we are together with him. Everyone will be so glad, so happy. Nobody is sad to be in the presence of, of, of a king, of a great leader. How much more will we be happy if we appear before the king of kings. So brethren, we are going to appear before Christ. That is one glorious thing that will happen to everyone that believes and waits on him faithfully to the end. Number two is that we are going to behold the glory of Christ. We're not just going to appear before him, we will behold his glory. John 17 verse 24. John 17 verse 24. The Bible says Jesus was praying for us. There he said, Father, I will that day also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am. Just like John 14, 3. And that day behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. So the disciples saw a glimpse of this glory we are talking about. 
when they were on the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus. Remember that story on the Mount of Transfiguration? So we shall see it also in full manifestation when we get to heaven. We will see the glory. It is wonderful. It's going to be wonderful. It's going to be glorious to appear before God and to appear, appear before Christ and to behold his glory. So we said, number one, that we are going to be with Christ. And number two, we will behold his glory. The number three thing that will happen when we get to heaven, when we appear before that judgment seat of Christ to receive our reward, is that we will also be glorified with him. In other words, we are not just going to see the glory, we are also going to be glorified with him. No wonder the Bible says that when he shall appear, we shall be as he is. We do not know what we are going to become now, or what we are, how it will happen. But one thing that is sure is that whatever glory that Jesus carries today, we also will be partakers of such glory. We will be glorified with him. In Romans chapter 8, verse 17 to 18, Romans 8, 17 to 18, Apostle Paul tells us that if, and if children, then we are heirs, heirs together of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. So we are going to be glorified together. And then he went further to encourage us in verse 18. He said, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Glory is a splendor, a manifestation of the very essence of God. We are not just going to behold uh, his glory, we are also going to be glorified too. We do not know what this actually means, like I said. We may not be able to picture how this glory will look like, what it will look like. But one thing is sure is that whatever Christ is, we shall also be when we be with him, our appear before him. Number four, we are going to reign with Christ. We will reign with Christ. Don't forget where we started from. We are going to be with him. We will be all this glory. We will also be glorified. And then we will reign with Christ. We shall reign with the King of Kings. In Matthew chapter 25, verses 20 to 23, in the parable of the talents, the faithful ones were made rulers over many things. He said, be, be rulers over many cities. So we are going to reign also. As Christ is reigning as the King of Kings, we are going to be there with him, also reigning with him in eternity. What a glorious time we are going to have. What a glorious reward that is for our labor, for our faithfulness, for our commitment, for our endurance, that, uh, and the sufferings that we will endure right here on earth for the sake of the kingdom. Not, for, not, not minding what the price will be. What is so important is that we make it to the end. What shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall it be trials, tribulations, perils, the pleasures of this world? What exactly is it? Is it famine? Is it hunger? Is it, is it, is it nakedness? Is it whatever it is? Nothing must separate us from this love of Christ. Why? Because there's something that is waiting for us. There's glory that is waiting for us. There is the opportunity to reign with Christ that has been given for us and we just must get there to inherit all things he that overcome it shall inherit all things we will reign with him we will inherit all things and we will be like him this is not just about something say all all things so take note of this very important we have looked at this lesson outline and again i want you to do this Let's, let's commit it to our heart. Very simple way. What do we expect? What are we expecting? What glory is there that is awaiting us as believers? When we appear, when we make it eventually to heaven, what are we going there to meet? Number one, we are going to be with Christ, our master. Number two, we said we are going to behold his glory. 
Number three, we will also be glorified. Number four, we will reign with Christ because we are joint heirs with Christ. We will also reign with him. We will be given opportunity to reign. Uh, don't forget that during the millennial reign, um, by the time we, the Christ returns with us, with, with the saints in glory, we is going to give unto us opportunity to rule over cities. It's going to be a very glorious one. And that opportunity, no believer should miss. Let me go straight to the second outline and then look at crowns. We have considered the glories. Let's look at the crowns. In other words, the reward can be divided into two, the glories and the crowns. What are these crowns that we are going to receive? Is it possible for believers to win several crowns? The answer is yes. Number one, there is the crown that is for faithful runners. Faithful runners. First Corinthians chapter 9, 24 to 25, part of our Bible passage. The Bible says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all. Of course, that is an, a, a symbolic way of representing what we are doing right now. The Christian race. And we are not running in vain. It is a, a symbol of what we are supposed to do in order to receive that crown. Everyone that is running is running with an aim. He said, but one received the prize. And then the challenge of say, so run that ye may obtain. And every man that strives for mastery, if you are also looking, doing something in order to become better in life, that you are looking forward to a goal to achieve. He said, if you are striving for mastery, for a goal, for something that is glorious, that you want to achieve, he said, you must be temperate. In other words, there must be this discipline. There must be self-control in order to be able to obtain. Now, they that do it, they do it in this world. People that run for, 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 for athletes that, that participate in race in order to win medals, they run and they, they put their body under control, under subjection, they discipline themselves. They go through a lot of exercises. What others can eat, they don't eat. What others drink, they don't drink. What they do, others do, they don't do. They discipline themselves. Why? Because their eyes is not just on the mark. Their eyes is on the goal. It is one thing to finish. It's another thing to finish well. And I am praying that we will all finish well and receive the crown in the mighty name of Jesus. So there is a crown for faithful runners. Those that we, with the whole of their heart, commit themselves to this Christian race, to this Christian journey, and without looking left and right, not allowing any form of distraction, not allowing the affairs of this world to corrupt them, not allowing influence of friends to take them away from their focus, from their goal. Faithful runners, those that have their eyes on the trophy, those people will receive a crown. That crown is also called the incorruptible crown. It is an incorruptible crown. In other words, it's a crown that can never decay, it can never spoil, it can never expire. An eternal crown. It is one for those who patiently run the race to heaven and are temperate in all things. Those who obey his instructions religiously, like like the instruction that Jesus, I mean, the mother of Jesus gave those servants in John chapter 2, verse 5. Whatsoever he tells you, whatsoever he asks you to do, do it. Whatever Christ has told us to do, let's do it. Let's be faithful. Let's be loyal to him. Let us religiously follow after the instructions of the almighty God without wavering, without looking here and there. Now, the yes, Lord Christians, those that will say yes, Lord, to the master, they are the people that are called faithful runners, ready to stay with Christ. Come rain, come shine. No matter what the situation is, they hold on to that faith that they have in Christ. They are not moved by situations. They are not moved by circumstances. They don't ask questions. God, where, where is your face? 
Where are you? Why are you? Why am, why am I going through this? They are so committed to him that whatever happens, they are so much assured that Christ will never leave them alone. Hebrews 12 verse 1 tells us, and this is a very serious admonition. He said, wherefore, saying, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. Whatever can distract us, let us set them aside. And the sin which do it so easily beset us. There are besetting sins, things sins that we easily commit, sins that without um, thinking so much we have committed, we must let go of them. And then let us run with patience. With patience. The race that is set before us. I pray that every one of us, teachers and also our students, will be faithful on us so that we can receive this crown, the incorruptible crown for those that endure and run faithfully to the end. The second class of crown that is available for us as believers, as Christians, is what is called the crown for soul winners. There is a crown for those that are committed to winning souls. First Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 19. First Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 19. The Bible says, For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? And not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming. In other words, Paul was saying, What is that crown of rejoicing that we have? It is you, the souls that we have saved. So it is important for us to know that this crown is available for us. It is a crown of rejoicing. For every convert that we have, we are going to receive medals. We are going to receive crowns. Crowns, the third class of crowns we will receive is referred to as crowns for participators. It's also called the crown of righteousness. This is for those that are waiting expecting the return of the Lord. Apostle Paul, at the tail end of his ministry, when he was true with his assignment, said in 2 Timothy 4 verse 8, 2 Timothy 4 verse 8, he said, henceforth, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness. Wow, that's a glorious one. He said, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. He said, not only for me, but unto all them also that love is appearing. Those that are waiting, eagerly waiting, expecting the Lord to come, that are so right, that are, are, have the right standing before him. Right standing, not the people that if you ask them, uh, if rapture should take place today, are you sure you will make it? And they are not sure. Those are not righteous people. They are not those people we are talking about. But there is this category of believers that we say, what am I waiting for? The reason why I'm here, why I'm waiting, I'm waiting for my Lord to come. I am eagerly waiting for Christ to return. They are called the, the, those that are in right standing. It is because they are in right standing with God. That is why they have the confidence that the master is coming and they are eagerly waiting. They are, this, there's a crown for those kind of people the participators, those waiting for him. And then there's a crown. That's the fourth category of crown for faithful, the four faithful ones. In James chapter 1, verse 12, the Bible says, Blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. This crown for faithful ones is referred to as the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Now, this is a crown that is important for those that we endure temptation. If we can endure, that there, there are trials, there are temptations in this world, but if we can endure, we have rewards, we have crowns waiting for us. In other words, we are going must endure temptation and overcome evil. We must love the Lord, we must be faithful unto death in order to be able to receive this crown. Crowns for pastors are also there and ministers. When we see pastor in our manual, it's not just talking about those that occupy the office of pastors. It's referring generally to all ministers. First Peter chapter 5, verse 4. And when the sheep shepherd shall appear, 
Ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. This crown is also called the crown of glory. It is a crown for faithful elders, for the under shepherds, for pastors, for missionaries, for the evangelists, for the teachers, Sunday school teachers, and for those who perform their duties so well that the great shepherd will say, well done, thou faithful servant. So whichever department, whichever field of ministry that you have found yourself, if you are faithful there, there is a reward for that assignment. And then the last category of crown is what is called the crown of gold for all the redeemed. Those that are washed with the blood of Jesus, those that are delivered from the market slavery of the devil and brought into the um, marvelous light of the Lord. Revelation 4 verse 4 says, And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty-four elders sitting, clothed in white garments, and they had in their heads crowns of glory, I mean of gold. We are going to wear a crown of gold, those of us that are redeemed. So there is a crown waiting for you. There is at least a crown also waiting for me. If we have been redeemed, there is a crown for us. It is not only earthly kings and queens that have these crowns. All those that are redeemed, born again, living their holy life, will also receive this crown. The big question is, are we prepared for these crowns? Are we prepared for these glories? So the summary of this lesson is that there are rewards and crowns for believers that faithfully endure to the very end. It is not the beginning that matters. It is how we end that really matters. So if we can endure to the end, if we can wait, the ultimate salvation is important. Once we make it to the end, we can be sure that our labor will be greatly rewarded by the time we appear before our master at the judgment seat of Christ. Thank you very much for listening and remain faithful to the end. God bless you. We are redeemed.